It's Torah talk. 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 We are witnesses and watchmen of Torah. Welcome to Torah Talk with Lou White and Mark Davidson. A Torah Institute podcast. <laughs> it's the Torah Zone. Hey, good morning, brother. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> good. How are you? I'm fine. That's good. Wow. Well, uh, let's see. This is the first day of uh, Hanukkah. Uh, is it really? First day. Here. Yes. yes. This is the first day. I, I um, We uh, had the grandchildren over last night, and they spent the night. They're, they're probably still in bed, <laughs> and we're uh, trying to keep quiet. It's uh, just barely sunrise here now. And we lit the uh, candles, you know. Yes. So what uh, Torah talk is this? Uh, number, num we're up to number 21 now, bro. Wow. <laughs> that's a lot of talking. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's great. Well, once a week. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's only, what, like five months. Yeah. So. Well, they're, uh, the world's going crazy. Uh, you know, I'm at a retail uh, operation. Yeah. And they're out there just, uh, you know, asking for some strange things. Yeah. You know, they really come out of the woodwork and they, they really, uh, I mean, all they have to do is just look around and say, well, I think I'll just have this. But they, they have this idea before they come in, you know, and then they, they let you hear it. And it's so strange. <laughs> oh, a cup of coffee. Ooh. Morning, sister. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm, I'm, I haven't had my shower yet. Yeah, <laughs> we just, uh, we, I know it's late for you, but we just woke up. That's okay. You know. <laughs> oh, I did, I told you. If they get up, maybe they can come see If the grandchildren come in, you can see what they look like when they first wake up. <laughs> that would be great. Just That'd pray them by. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, after the, well, just. Lots of people are very, very happy with the way you were teaching the last two weeks, uh, with the name of the Father and the name of the Son. We've had requests. Yeah. We've had requests for DVDs, so they're in production as we speak. So I figure, well, we've got the name now. Maybe we should go to the Covenant. Uh, it kind of goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And uh, talk about the Covenant. What's the big deal? About why we have to be in a Covenant and and if we got time, we might get to what the uh, covenant, what the marriage vows are, you know? Yes, yes. Well, you know, uh, it's interesting. The word covenant in Hebrew is the word brith. Brith, B-R-I-T-H. Uh, some shorten it to B-R-I-T, Brit. And, of course, British and Britain, those are terms that come from, you know, the days when the... Israelites were being scattered, and the peoples themselves were retaining a lot of their original Hebrew roots. Even um, the names of their territories where they were leaving waymarks, Iberia, Hibernia, which is what we call England and Ireland now. Ireland is actually loaded with a lot of lost Israelites, and as is London and all the Scandinavian countries. All those Vikings, you know, the Viking peoples. And uh, Denmark, Danes, you know, that's the tribe of Dan. Mm. And, of course, uh, you know, Yehuda. <clears throat> and there's the, uh, some people will have to look this up, but there's a, a, a place in the scriptures uh, in, Gen in Bereshith or Genesis where there was a boy named Pharez that was born and his brother. And um, one popped his hand out and the, the nurse put a ribbon around it or a cord, and it was, I thought it was a red cord. Anyway, that, that red cord is emblematic of, uh, you know, the kingship that should be his, but 
it was actually the other child that was born first, fully. But the one that, that breached first was the one that did not receive the uh, royal line. Oh. And, you know, that's a controversy right now. And we could study that, too, uh, a little later. But when I can get the details on that and, and uh, give you the, the current events on that. But that's another story. But Britain, <clears throat> Brit, is the word in Hebrew that means covenant. That's a translation, though. But the actual word, the literal meaning of it, is to cut, you know, to cut something. And that's why circumcision is called the cutting, or the, the it's it's a the covenant, it's a covenant sign, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> so covenants usually were accompanied by signs, and the covenant that was made with Noah and all the living creatures was the rainbow, and that's the sign of the of that covenant, you know. So we have uh, the circumcision as a sign, and these signs are, you know important. The sign of the covenant made at Sinai, of course. Does anybody know in the audience? Mm. Sign of, the what sign of the Sabbath. Oh, sign of the Sabbath. Was it really? Fantastic. Yeah. The everlasting covenant is has a sign, and of course the sign of the everlasting covenant is also everlasting. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? So the sign is the Sabbath. The sign between Yahuwah and his people forever is the Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath. And so uh, that's kind of cool. So the covenants are accompanied by signs. But uh, when Abraham, or his name was at that time, Abram, and he had, he had just finished meeting with Melchizedek, and shortly thereafter he... Uh, was speaking to Yahuwah about his childless situation. He said Eliezer, or Eleazar, whatever his servant's name really was, was his servant in his household. And, and he said, it looks like there's going to be no offspring here. I, I have no children to inherit. And of course, he was a very wealthy person. And he wanted to see his, his, some children inherit instead of a servant, you know, and then, uh, or his servant's children. So uh, Yahuwah made a covenant with him, and he told Abram to cut these, well, four of the creatures were cut in half. No, three of the, three of the creatures were cut in half. That's what it was. There was a, let me see, uh, I think I have a, I, I think, what do you call these flashcards? Flashcards. I have a flashcard. Yeah. Uh, we, he, he told him to cut a heifer in half and a, and a ram in half and a goat in half. And then he had a pigeon and a turtle dove. I guess he sort of put those on either side. And Yahuwah walked between them, okay? And when Yahuwah walked between them, that was the sign of them being cut. That was the cutting of the covenant. So brit, breath, means to cut. And uh, in the case of uh, many of the covenants, they're, they're not contingent upon anyone, uh, both parties doing something. A covenant is a, is a, is a promise. It's a, it's a contract. But it sometimes doesn't require both sides to do really do anything. Because mm -hmm. you uh, on his own word, stands in, in his own name. He stands behind it. That's why a person's name is only as good as his word. You know, yeah. So if you have a good name, then you always keep the things that you say you're going to do. You observe them and you keep doing them. Now, Yahuwah has never let anyone down on his, on his word. And so he has a very perfect record and a very good name. Mm -hmm. And so that name and word, and we always talk about it because we're not serene. But we always say, well, we're guardians of his name and his word. And those two things are like, you know, always the thing that we're talking about. At least that's what we talk about. But, you know, I hope all the other Nazarim in the, in the world talk about it. We're defenders. We're, uh, you know, watchmen, mm -hmm. guardians mm -hmm. of his name and his word. But anyway, the, the, the contract or the, the, the thing that Yahuwah made with Abram, I think
think it was around Bereshith or Genesis chapter 15. If anybody wants to read that whole, it's like 20 to 21 verses. And we can read it. It's really kind of fun. I think I can get it up here. But yeah. the uh, thing of it is, he went through this and walked between them. And he just promised Abram, you know, he made a promise. Wow. And we can read that promise. See, Abraham, Abraham, or Abram at that time, wasn't expected to, to do anything. He was just making a request. And Yahuwah loves us so much that, and he knew that Abram was going to become the nations, you know, the father of nations. And so he was basically making this with one man, but through that one man, all the nations would be baruched or blessed, you know. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Anyway, the covenant at Sinai is similar. Of course, that was a marriage, but uh, let me see if I can find this. Here we go. Uh, Genesis 15 starts out. After these events, the word of Yahuwah. Now, that's interesting. That's a phrase. The word of Yahuwah. Now, we did a, a little short study on the word of Yahuwah, and it has to do with his his intrinsic power and authority within himself, the word. When he speaks, things actually appear because they can't help not appear. It's like the power of, of, his, of his essence. And Anyway, after these events, the word of Yahuwah came to Abram in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward is exceedingly great. Now, some say, in some translations, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. And Abram said, Sovereign Yahuwah, what would you give me, see I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, see, you have given me no seed, and see, one born in my house is my heir. And see, the word of Yahuwah came to him saying, this one is not your heir, but he who comes from your own body is your heir. And he brought me, brought him outside, and he said, look now toward the heavens, and count the stars, if you are able to count them. And he said to him, so are your seed. And he believed in Yahuwah, and he reckoned it to him for righteousness, because he believed what he said. And he said to him, I am Yahuwah who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Sovereign Yahuwah, where do I know, whereby do I know that I possess it? And he said to him, bring me three, a, a three-year-old heifer and a three-year-old female goat and a three-year-old ram and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took all these to him and cut them in the middle and placed them each half opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds. And the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, and Abram drove them away. And it came to be when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and see, a frightening great darkness fell upon him. And he said to Abram, know for certain that your seed are to be sojourners in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. That kind of reminds us of uh, Charlton Heston. You know, <laughs> but the nation whom they serve, I am going to judge, and afterward let them come out with great possessions. Now as for you, you are, you are to go to your fathers in peace, and you are to be buried at a good old age. Then in the fourth generation, they shall return here, for the crookedness of the Amorites is not yet complete. And it came to be when the sun went down, and it was dark, that see a smoking oven and a burning torch passing between those pieces. And on the same day, Yahuwah made a covenant with Abram, saying, I have given you this land, I have given this land, to your seed from the river of Mitzrayim to the great river, the river Euphrates, with the Canaanite and the, and the Kenizzite and the Kadmonite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the, and the Rephah 
Im, Rephaim. And the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Gigashite, and the Yebusite. And that's the end of the chapter 15. But uh, he was giving him a promise. And it came true. Yes, it did. <laughs> We're all from Abraham. Yes, and but that was before gunpowder was invented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the burning so, uh, torch. Yes, the burning torch. It, no cool. telling what that looked like. He, it's just a description of it, but it's a translation. Right. So, uh, anyway, the covenant uh, that we're all really excited about is the one that was renewed for us in our hearts and it was written a love for it was written in our hearts by Yahushua when we get the uh, when we surrender and we turn to him and we say I want to serve you and in immersion and then he brings us a love for his words and his covenant so and that was something that was given at Sinai but uh, I'd to like all to, the children. Yeah, I'd like to talk about the renewed covenant because I uh, was talking to a lady last week who was a, uh, her son was a, well, they're all Christians, but uh, her son is a Christian pastor. And uh, she was asking about Christmas and I was telling her about witchcraft. And, uh, and she, yeah. uh, she was like, oh, I, I don't think we have to be afraid of those sort of things. You know, I don't think we have to be, you know, They've all been washed clean by the blood, you know. We don't have to be afraid of those things. And and she was going on like that. And I said, well, yeah, that's that's cool. I understand that. I'm not afraid of them. But uh, I said, Scripture is very clear that Yahushua, if we love him, we're to keep his commandments. And uh, he tells us what he likes and what he doesn't like. And he hates us cutting down trees and putting them in our house. So... I said, that's what he says, not really about what you think or I think. It's, it's uh, what he, he says. And uh, she was getting a bit hot under the collar and, you know. Oh, that's been nailed to the cross. You know, the law has been nailed <laughs> to the cross and, and all this sort of thing. So then I had to go and explain mm. all that and replacement theology and all this stuff. So, I um, yeah, it's a big thing, the new covenant. They're always calling it the new covenant. Get rid of the old and the new covenant. Where we're all free now, we live under grace. And uh, so, I'd, I'd love it if you went into the renewed covenant. You don't call it new, do you? You call it renewed. Well, the word renewed is a more accurate description of it. Renewed, uh, as in the fact that we don't have a a new moon. It's not like a different moon. It's it's the same moon, but every time it cycles around, it we call it a new moon, and so as long as we don't misunderstand, that's appropriate, as long as we understand it, it's not a different covenant. But you see, they would love for it to be a different covenant, because that's what replacement theology is all predicated upon. There's a different covenant, because there's a different people. And they uh, recently went in the Roman Catholic uh, uh, magisterium, or circus, they uh, basically have come forth and said that the Yahudim or the Jews are no longer Yahuwah's people. And they, well, that's what they've all been hinting at all along. And that's why they were persecuting them. And there was so much controversy and contention because it was like competition, you know, when in fact everyone is entitled to become enjoined into the covenant, you know. The uh, renewal of the covenant was prophesied, though, in Yermiyahu, or Jeremiah chapter 31, which is awesome. In fact, Nazarene were mentioned in that chapter early on in, in the verses. You know, would you like to read those verses? Yeah, yeah, go there. This is very, this is foundational. See, it's, it's difficult to have a foundation built upon unclean things. But if you go back and trace your steps and you start at the foundation, then you can then you can build your house and say, look, I'm I'm standing on the foundation. You can't shake this. Like you can't touch you can't touch this. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway, let, let me read it to you here. I'll put on my glasses this time. We've got, I won't have to. We've got some theme music now. Beauty. All righty. At that time, declares Yahuwah, I shall be the Elohim of all the clans of Israel. That's an interesting statement. And they shall be my people. 
Thus said Yehua, a people escaped from the sword found favor in the wilderness, Yisrael, when it went to find rest. Yehua appeared to me from afar, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I shall draw you with kindness. I am going to build you again, and you shall be rebuilt, O maiden of Yisrael. Again, you shall take up your tambourines and go forth in the dances of those who rejoice. Again, you shall plant vines on the mountains of Shomeron. The planters shall plant and treat them as common. For there shall be a day when the watchmen cry on Mount Ephraim. Now that word watchman is not serene. And Mount Ephraim is talking about the lead tribe of the scattered ten tribes of Israel. Arise. Now this is what the watchmen are saying. Arise and let us go up to Sion, to Yahuwah our Elohim. For thus said Yahuwah, sing with gladness for Yaakov, and shout among the chief of the nations. Cry out, give praise, and say, O Yahuwah, save your people, the remnant of Yisrael. See, I am bringing them from the land of the north, and shall gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together with a great assembly returning here. With weeping they shall come, and with their prayers I bring them. I shall make them walk by rivers of waters in a straight way in which they do not stumble. For I shall be a father to Yisrael and Ephraim. He is my firstborn. Hear the word of Yahuwah, O Gentiles, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He who scattered Yisrael gathers him and shall guard him as a shepherd his flock. For Yehuah shall ransom Yaakov and redeem him from the hand of one stronger than he. And they shall come in and shall sing on the height of Sion and stream to the goodness of Yehuah for grain and for new wine and for oil, for the young of the flock and the herd, and their being shall be like a well-watered garden and never languish again. And then shall a maiden rejoice in a dance, and young men and old together, and I shall turn their mourning to joy, and shall comfort them, and shall make them rejoice from their sorrow, and shall fill the being of the priests with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, declares Yahuwah. Now in verse 15, it starts out like this. Thus said Yahuwah, a voice was heard in Ramah, wailing, bitter weeping, Raquel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Now he's talking about the slaughter of the innocents there in the time of Herod. Thus said Yahuwah, hold back your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for there is a reward for your work, declares Yahuwah, and they shall return from the land of the enemy, and there is expectancy for your latter end declares Yahuwah, and your children shall return to their own country. I have clearly heard Ephraim lamenting. You have chastised me, and I was chastised like an untrained calf. Turn me back, and I shall turn back, for you are Yahuwah, my Elohim. Now that verse 18 reflects the, the whole tone of Psalm 80, Ephraim asking Yahuwah to turn him back. Now, in verse 19, for after my turning back, I repented, and after I was instructed, I struck myself on the thigh, like that. I was ashamed, even humiliated, for I bore the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim a precious son to me, a child of delights? For though I spoke against him, I still remembered him. That is why my affections were deeply moved for him. I have great compassion for him, declares Yahuwah. Set up signposts, make way marks, set your heart toward the highway, the way in which you went. Turn back, O maiden of Yisrael, turn back to these cities of yours. Till when would you turn here and there, O backsliding daughter? For Yahuwah has created what is new on earth. A woman encompasses a man. Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yisrael, let them once again say this word in the land of Yehuda and in its cities 
when I turn back their captivity. Yahuwah bless you, O home of righteousness, mountain of set-apartness. And in Yehuda and in all its cities, farmers and those who journey with flocks shall dwell together. For I shall fill the, the weary being, and I shall replenish every grieved being. At this I awoke and looked around, and my sleep was sweet to me. Now in verse 27, Yermiyahu 31, verse 27. See, the days are coming, declares Yehuda, that I shall sow the house of Israel and the house of Yehuda with the seed of man and the seed of beast. And it shall be that as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so I shall watch over them to build and to plant, declares Yehuda. In those days they shall no longer say, the fathers ate sour grapes and the children's teeth are blunted. But each one shall die for his own crookedness. Whoever eats sour grapes, his teeth shall be blunted. See, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I shall make a new covenant with the house of Yisrael and with the house of Yehuda. Now that word new is renewed. And you can look at Hebrews chapter 8 and Hebrews chapter 10. He's quoting this. Not like the covenant I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Israel, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them. Now that's important. You know, understand the word husband. For this is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Israel after those days, declares Yahuwah. I shall put my Torah, that's their instruction, his instructions, in their inward parts and write it on their hearts. And I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Now that's important to see the distinction. The covenant is not a different covenant. It's because he's saying that the difference, though, of the new covenant, is the difference instead of being written in stone tablets, it's going to be written in men's hearts. And no longer shall they teach one, each one his neighbor, and each one his brother, saying, No, Yahuwah, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them declares Yehuda, for I shall forgive their crookedness and remember their sin no more. Thus said Yehuda, who gives the sun for a light by day, and the laws of the moon and the stars for a light by night, who stirs up the sea and its waves roar. Yehuda of hosts is his name. If these laws vanish from before me, declares Yehuda, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus said Yahuwah, if the heavens above could be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I would also cast off all the seed of Yisrael for all that they have done, declares Yahuwah. See, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, that the city shall be built for Yahuwah from the tower of Hananel to the corner gate, and the measuring line shall again extend straight ahead to the hill Garib, then it shall turn toward Goa. And all the valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields as far as the Wadi Kidron to the corner of the horse gate toward the east is to be set apart to Yahuwah. It shall not be plucked up or thrown down any more forever. Anyway, it's interesting. He talked about how eternal this covenant is. If the heavens could be measured, you know, there's not gonna, that's not going to happen. You know, the foundations of the earth searched out, you know. So what? that's the main point. That's the main point of the renewed covenant, was it? That one was written in stone and the other is written on our hearts. Yeah, it's that, it's that simple, really. And uh, when they were standing at Sinai uh, and Yahuwah asked, he was waiting for the confirmation or the acceptance of the covenant, that all the children of Israel, all the tribes, not just the Jews, but all the tribes that would become the nations of the earth, declared, all that you say we will do and obey. They accepted the covenant. And Ephraim, who received the firstborn blessing, still has that blessing upon him. And he's all over the world, you know, mm. sown into the nations. And, of course, that includes uh, all the other tribes that, that accepted the covenant. And all we have to do now in the last days is wake up like the prodigal son and go, I, I left my father's household, meaning we left his covenant. We are keeping his instructions. The household has laws or instructions. And when we didn't want to live with the father, 
he scattered us and the prodigal son left and wasted the father's wealth. And uh, now here we are among the nations, the prodigal son, being all the tribes, are awakening to the fact that they realize that they are the lost tribes, the scattered tribes. And they all they have to do is go back to the father's household. And all we want to do is serve him. And the, the prodigal son, in the parable, all he wanted to do was just become like a servant, if his father would even have him. And, but he was extremely excited. You could hear the words of the love that Yahoo had for Ephraim, you know. Hmm. Is he not a precious child? And he, he went out, no doubt, every day, waiting for that child to come back, looking down that road, waiting for that child, you know. Yeah. And the older brother is um, the uh, Yahudim, huh? Right. Never left the covenant. Never left. Mm. You see, that's why we wake up in these Gentile religions. You know, uh, we're serving other Elohim. And even the Christians don't realize it, but because they took the name out and they put another name in, they're serving another Elohim too. The Elohim of this world. B-A-A-L. You know, translates mm -hmm. as Lord. You know. So we have to put the name back and accept his name and his word. And just realize that he's good for his word. He will, he, he will accept us. All we have to do is just say, all right, I don't want to run my own life. You see, that's the difference. When you hear the people like your friend talking about, well, he doesn't care. Or he's forgotten about what this really meant. And it doesn't mean that to me. And they only look at it from their point of view. Then they're looking at it from the mind of their flesh. It's what they think. That makes mm -hmm. them that makes them in charge. They they will not submit, you know. But when they do, they'll say, you know, I don't really care what it looks like to me. I know it looks pretty, uh, but it isn't right. You know, it's not truth. It's it's a foundation that is built upon a lie. It's corrupt. Yeah, you can't build uh, you can't build on a bad foundation, no. a corrupt foundation. Well, that's great about the um, the renewed covenant. You've made it so simple. It's, it's about one was written on stone and the other's in our hearts. I was telling people that uh, the point of the renewed covenant was that the Gentiles are now allowed in, whereas previously he only made a covenant with Israel. That's not quite accurate, is it? Well, Israel is the, are the Gentiles. See, that's the thing yeah. that's secret. Uh, in, the, in the movie, or not the movie, the documentary, uh, the seminar, there's a seminar on Torah Zone called The Secret. <clears throat> and you can uh, get that DVD or you can watch it on YouTube, I believe. And the secret is, has been kept from the enemy, that we were sown into the nations and we're going to return to the covenant. You know, and we're doing it in the last days. That's amazing. We're a secret. It's like he's he's breeding us in secret, a secret army. <laughs> yep, and we're all waking up, and we're going, what? And we're the prodigal, you know, the prodigal son, the son that wasted everything. And now we're realizing it isn't about, you know, one generation. It's about many, many, many generations. It's like 2,700 plus years. The, the scattering started like over 2,700 years ago. And he sowed us into all the nations, and we look different. We, 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 we have different customs. We, uh, you know, shave faces. We have shaved heads. We have tattoos. And all these things that he said are abominations. And we serve uh, the sun deity by various names. We put up Christmas trees in our house, having no idea why. <laughs> Neither do most people even care, but they're really busy, really busy, working hard, almost like cutting their bodies to serve their Lord, and yet nothing's happened, you know. They're not happy, you know. I mean, I look at you and I see happy, you know. You're really a happy <laughs> fellow, and I, I hope I'm happy if I don't have joy in me. It's either the joy that we have is because we know our Creator, and we know His name. Psalm 91, you know, it says he's going to protect us because we know his name. And how can they think that they can read the Lord and say, yeah, that's his name? Or no, he has many names. Well, where's that scripture? Where does he say, 
Oh, yeah, I'm loaded with names. I've got millions of them. You know? <laughs> He's got one. He's got a covenant name. And uh, if, if you're uh, not in covenant with him, I imagine you're pretty scared and frightened. Mm. Yeah. But uh, we have joy, no matter what. So all those times through the through the scripture that he's saying, you know, I am Yahuwah Rapha, and I am Yahuwah ZedQ, and all these other names. He's not saying I've got a different name. He's just that's kind of just uh, he's tacking on part of his personality, wasn't he? Or what yeah. he was doing at the time. Yeah, it's his role, his name first, and then what he does, you know, provider, uh, everlasting. Well, he's, his name will be called in, in mm -hmm. Yeshiyahu, I think it's chapter 7. It's yeah. early. Keep careful now. Uh, <laughs> his name will be uh, wonderful. Yeah. His name will be called wonderful. Not yeah. his name will be wonderful, but his name will be called wonderful. Yeah. Counselor, Everlasting Father, uh, Mighty Elohim, you know, yeah. uh, that's, that's an amazing thing. And uh, we're talking about Yahusha, Everlasting yeah. Father, Mighty yeah. Elohim. So the whole point about the covenant is that it hasn't changed. No, he wouldn't change. What was an abomination to him, uh, to, uh, you know, 2,000, 3,000 years ago, is still an abomination. It's uh, mm. just how we look at it. Like in the, the prophet Jeremiah, or Yermiyahu, in chapter 10, he talks about taking trees out of the forest, bringing them into your house, decorating with silver and gold. And of course, that, that is an A-S-H-E-R-A-H. -H. Mm. It's uh, just wrong. Yeah. So when they talk about nailing all the law to the cross, something you wrote uh, over the last couple of weeks... I remember you were saying that the ceremonial law was gone, you know, slaughtering animals and, and all that hoo-ha, but, but the actual moral law that defines sin or lawlessness, it has to stand because if, if there's no definition of what sin is, then why would we need to be delivered? Is that, is that what you were saying? <laughs> well, that's basically it. It's so simple because, you know, what defines a sin He's given us in his covenant. You know, if we violate that covenant, then we have transgressed the covenant. That's what we've done. And uh, see, evil, it was an email I sent you that Albert, uh, that Albert Einstein had, uh, when he was a student, he was in a classroom, apparently around a lot of other people that were believers in, you know, at JESUS. And uh, the teacher was an atheist. And he was saying, well, you know, do you think that there's good and evil? And, of course, uh, good and evil are two different things in our minds, but only one of them really exists. Evil does not really exist because it's the absence of good. And just like light and darkness, light and Albert Einstein illustrated this with heat. Remember in that little uh, email? Yeah, yeah. And, he wrote that book and uh, I think it was 1921 or something. It was called uh, uh, G.O.D. versus Science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, heat exists, but cold does not exist. Light exists, but darkness does not exist. It's just the absence of light. So Yahuwah did not create evil. Evil is just simply like darkness. It's the, it's the absence of of light, which uh, you know, it's just our it's our own thinking that we that where we make our errors. Our premise is actually flawed at the beginning, mm -hmm. and that's what Albert Einstein was pointing out to his teacher, mm -hmm. saying, "Well, your premise is flawed." You know, so uh, you know when we violate the covenant, when we when we read the commandments and we are the instructions, the directions. That's what they are. They're directives. Their declarations, you know, and when we open ourselves to them, then we receive them and we want them and we live by them. It programs our thinking because those are the thoughts of Yahuwah. And uh, when he says, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, well, that very first 
part is the is the tip of the sword. And if you change that and make it someone else, then the identity is stolen. Yahuwah's identity is gone. Uh, you know, and so uh, that's why that last uh, seminar was discussing that. Uh, the the war in heaven is over who is the sovereign of yeah. esteem. Yeah. You know, Elijah was or Eliyahu was having that battle with the, you know, or that debate, you know, at Mount Carmel over this very issue. And we're and we're standing up doing it again. Why would we have to do that? You know. <laughs> You have to do it over and over and over. Say, you know, Lord, what is that? You know, let's go back to Yahuwah. You know, that's what we're saying. That's what the prophecy is. Let us return to Sion, to Yahuwah, our Elohim. You know, not to the Lord. The translators are tricking us. Yeah. But, uh, the, um, I think what a lot of the Christian teaching it, as far as the covenants is that they're they're saying that there's so many of them, and each one sort of succeeds the last one. You know, we have, there's a covenant with Adam, there's a covenant with, uh, you know, Noah and Abraham and Daoud. Yeah. There's a covenant with Daoud, and then there's and lots of others in between. And so, what was the big difference when Yahushua came along and set in motion a renewed covenant the night before he would, his death? What was what was the main point of that? Well, I think uh, one illustration that answers that is um, if we look at his brother's writings, his name, they call him James, Yaakov, uh, his half-brother, Yahushua's half-brother, addressed his letter, or his epistle, to the lost tribes, or the scattered tribes, the scattered tribes of Israel. And, and he's writing to the Gentiles, who are the scattered tribes, you know, among the nations. And he's, you know, illustrating the same things that Yahuwah was, Yahushua himself was saying, uh, repent for the reign of Yahuwah draws near. And uh, this message has got to go out into the earth and we're to teach the nations. He said, go and teach all the nations to obey everything I've commanded you to obey. And of course, he's not like got some insider group of new commandments. You know, he did give us a new commandment because he was summing everything up, you know, to love one another. And that is a commandment. That's something that he's given us. He, he said it's a, a new commandment, but it could be implied to, as a renewed commandment because all the commandments that were given were directed as, as how to love Yahuwah with all of our mind, our heart, our, our strength, our being, and love our neighbor as ourself. And see, the first word is aha, which is love. We're learning how to love. And of course, when he said, uh, this is a new, a new commandment, I give you, he was basically saying, well, this is summing everything up. If you love one another, then, uh, you, you, of course, you wouldn't stop loving him. You love him above above all, you know, but, um, you know, and, and, and that's what uh, makes it kind of hard, because when you fall in love with him, because you know his name, and then you go and you share this intense excitement that you have, this joy with others that are completely in the dark, I mean, their minds are dark, and they're, hung, they're just covered over with all this nonsense, you know, all these strongholds, when you're talking to a person that's lost, they're not aware of all the trash and all the misinformation that they are clinging to. They cling to it with fondness. They love their little wreath and their and their trees and their pumpkins and and and, their, and they love their Sunday thing. And they even hear the word Sunday. Their hearts burn with joy. I mean, they do. Uh. We used to be like that. <laughs> well, I was like that. Yeah. See, those are strongholds. That's when you they're get your battery recharged. <laughs> they're mental fortresses. Yeah. And they've been, you've been programmed like a, an alarm system has been rewired. You know, it's like you've got a good working alarm system, and then somebody comes along every week and then 
changes the wires a little bit and says, this is not going to set the alarm off anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah, it says the Sabbath, but you know, that's changed. Look, I just changed the wiring. Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, why not go back and look at the foundation? Because if your foundation is corrupt, then how can anything good come from that foundation? You know, it, it can't work. Go back to the, go back and find the original paths. Go back to the old path. The ancient and paths. The, the ancient paths. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's go back there. And that's why we're in such hot water with all the world. It's like we're in a furnace. It's just like he said, an iron furnace. We're surrounded with all these lies. And we're just swir it's swirling around us constantly with all these pagan holidays and so forth. Even week by week by week, every week is corrupted. They're, they're going to their steeples. You know, a big witch hat thing going on, you know. Uh, a-S-H-E-R-A-H. They're still going back to the pole. Mm. And the wreath. I'm seeing these wreaths everywhere on these uh, on these Christian assembly buildings. They're getting more and more fancy each year, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. So uh, when Yahushua came and uh, set in motion, he had his, his last supper with his emissaries, and he said, this is a renewed covenant in my blood. This was... Because it was his blood, that's why the covenant can now be written on the hearts, isn't it? That's the connection. Whereas previously, uh, there was no power in the animal's blood. It was kind of symbolic, wasn't it? So the covenant was written on stone. Is there some connection between Yahushua's blood and the fact that the covenant is now written on our hearts? Absolutely. Yeah, the animal's blood was a life, and it was given in place of the one who had transgressed. And that blood could not cover their sins. It was just pointing to something that would. It's just like all those animals were being slaughtered and all their blood was poured out on the altar, you know, as a atonement. But it was pointing to the one sacrifice. So for many, many, many hundreds of years, they were pointing forward in time to the one sacrifice. Of Yahusha himself. And now, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later, we're pointing back to it again. See, so they're all pointing to that one thing, you know, that one event, that one sac that one offering that was made in Yahusha's perfect blood. His uh, his blood is uh, immeasurably powerful. And it sprinkles our hearts now. His blood is actually sprinkling our hearts. And, he does, and it's a constant thing that covers our sins. And uh, we can't just say, well, we have freedom now to go ahead and ignore the commandments. Because we love the commandments. And that's what makes us so annoying to people. And, that, and sometimes we get overly zealous and we go, no. You know, and we don't want to get argumentative about it, but they've been programmed, and you have to, you know, slowly overcome these strongholds by the washing of the word. They've got to look at the word rather than the traditions, because the traditions are very powerful uh, things that, that keep people blind, as we well know, because we were blind at one time. Because all we have to do is be willing to give up the lie and to say, well, is his name... Yahushua, or is it, or is it J -E -S 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 -S? Well, you have to choose, and when you choose, then you will no longer go back to the what you vomited up, because if a dog returns to its vomit, then what what what, what have you what have you done? And and where can you find the Christmas tree, or the pumpkin, or the bunny rabbit and the eggs and all that? See, just don't do it, because it does have a very nasty origin. It's fertility. Lighting candles on cakes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Making, making cakes for the Queen of Heaven and then blowing out candles and making a wish at the moment the smoke rises. What's that? Is that witchcraft? But that's not oh. what we do. That's not why we do it. <laughs> okay. Well, why are we doing it? <laughs> because they're being taught and programmed. Yeah. Yeah, right. Jeremiah, or Yermiyahu, chapter 16, verse 19. 
it says our fathers have inherited nothing but lies and things mm -hmm. of no value. Yeah. And uh, we've handed it down to our children and our children's children and so forth. And that's what we're seeing here. See the imprinting of mm -hmm. pagan ways. And then the next one is imprinted. That's amazing. We might call it quits tonight, eh, brother? All and, right, then. And next week we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go into the, uh, the Ten Commandments, the, the marriage oh covenant. And we can dissect them and go through one by one, and you can, you can tell us what's happened to them and where they it's are. There's a flash uh, showing each commandment, certain key words. Yeah, that beautiful. Would, yeah, yeah, that would be great. Fantastic. Okay, well, that's great. Wonderful talking to you, brother. Well, it was really great seeing you again. It's been over a week now, so yeah. I'll see you next uh, next week at the same time. Yeah, we'll let you know. We'll speak to the girls, okay. see what they're doing. Yeah, right. Well, thank you, and we'll see you soon. Love you. Love you too, mate. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. So what have we to hide? A secret is brewing, a power deep inside. The bride's being purified, the garment's made pure white. The mystery is ending, the Torah will Watchmen of Torah, we are olive trees with a word from Yahusha. Where the scattered prodigals, the house of Ephraim, where all witnesses coming. i